Uh, we left off on presentation three. We were halfway through it. If you go in and you look at Blackboard, so if you're watching these videos online and you're not taking this class at Fresno State, please don't email me and say, how do I get into Blackboard? This is for the students who are at Fresno State, which means all of y'all here. I put these videos on YouTube and uh, sometimes I get random emails. How do I get access to Blackboard? <laughs> it's for the Fresno State students. You're just watching this in China. I don't know where you're at. Uh, so, uh, but inside Blackboard, you can now click here and you have all the lectures for CSU Fresno. These go to a bit of a quicker clip than the Fresno City College lectures. So we're gonna quickly outpace them, but if you're finding that, hey, uh, something's not making sense to me, you might drop in on the Fresno City College lectures and they go a little bit slower and a lot more interactive question and answering and exploring. So you can check that out, but the same presentations. So uh, we left off halfway through 03. We we're looking at Hello World, and I think we got to expressions and statements, and, uh, and then we read that, and then uh, where did we get to? We didn't get to the go, uh, um, go run. Yes, yeah, so we got go run, go files, I think, right? And that allows us to run our programs. How many people are able to do Hello World at home? Cool, yeah, no big deal. All right, so uh, next thing is like go build and go install. And uh, these are commands. And if we look at the terminal and, you know, we do that thing with go help. And so one of the things I really want to convey in the first week or two is like the different areas where you are able to look things up and sort of find help on your own. And so we have godoc.org. Godoc.org was one of the places. And uh, we also had golang.org. Who could tell me the difference between godoc.org and golang.org? So golang.org, like if I just look for, if I just look for, uh, you know, format golang, right? I just want to look for format golang. It'll say golang.org package format. Golang.org package format. And so if I go there, I'm at golang.org. But here if I'm at godoc and I say format, Right? I could also bring up the format package, but I'm at godoc.org format, and it's the exact same information. It's formatted slightly different. But what's the difference between golang.org and godoc.org? <coughs> so go, golang.org is the official website for the Golang uh, language, and that's only Golang SDK documentation, software development kit documentation. And, and godoc.org is going to be everybody in the world. Sorry, I'm looking at the wrong one. Godoc.org will be every uh, documentation for any package that anybody wrote, right? So I could search here for UUID, a universally unique ID, and I have packages written by all kinds of different people. And so this summer, the one we were using at the boot camp was this one right here, right? So somebody else wrote that. That wasn't like the official SDK, right? So godoc.org has documentation for any packages or libraries written for the Golang language. And golang.org only has documentation for the official SDK. At the terminal, you could also find help by typing in, you know, uh, go help as a command. You could just type in help, what's that do? That brings up like just your terminal help, but go help brings up this, right? And then we could put in commands, so we could put in any of that stuff, or we could put in topic, put in any of that stuff. So, and one more thing at the terminal is we have GoDoc, right? So we could do GoDoc and we could do format and it brings up the same documentation that I find at golang.org, godoc.org, right? I could also find it at the terminal by just typing in GoDoc uh, format. So that's just some of the areas we can find help. I feel a little bit pressured and rushed in this class. It's like I want to blast through materials and make progress, but we only got an hour. It was better last semester, two hours. I don't know why they took it away. So we're going to look at go build versus go install. And we talked a little bit about this last, last week. And we're going to see more about it in a minute. But just take a moment to digest that, read that. I'm going to try to stick to the slides because, well, it's kind of good both ways. But go build. So we have two places we could run go build, you know, conceptually in our code. We could run it in a folder where we have an executable. Like if I run it in the hello folder, you can see here in the terminal, I'm in hello, and I run go build. And so what it does is it builds first file.go and creates an executable. So that's running go build in a 
folder package library where I have an executable, right? And if I run go install in a folder that has an ex executable, meaning it has function main, func main, and package main, right? So go build, we'll put the executable right there when I run it for a folder that has package main in it. Go install will drop the, the binary in my bin folder in the workspace, okay? So that's go build, go install, run in a folder that has package main. And then if we have go build and go install, and we run it in a folder that's just a library, let me see if I have that example, yay. <laughs> oh, so there, there's go install, and that's the same thing, it's putting it in the bin. I'll let you read it. How many of you want to read it? Raise your hand. Coo, right? So we're just learning about go build and go install. And this is all connecting back to our workspace. And what do those commands do? And so we've been running them in folders that have an executable, meaning they have a package main, right? The entry point for our program. And if we run, uh, you know, so here go install puts, you know, the binary in the bin folder, right? So that's where it is. And so if I have a path set to that in my environment variables, I can now at my terminal just type in hello, and it'll search down all my paths, find the hello executable, and run it. So uh, when I run go install uh, under just a package, so it doesn't have package main in the folder. Let me see if I have a picture of string util. I don't. Right? It would, it would create, um, it creates, I don't know what the .a folder is. I'm imagining it's just, do you know? Binary for it's, a package? It's partially compiled. So partially it makes compiled. It makes it faster when you actually give the exe because it can just grab the, the already partially done stuff. Cool. The ob it's an object file. It's the official name. Awesome. I like want to run over and be like, high five stack, but maybe that's too much energy for you guys. I don't know. Um, uh, so uh, yeah, so go install when you run it on a folder. You know, uh, we'll put your package into your package folder. Makes sense, right? And uh, so once a program has been compiled and put into bin, as I have a path variable putting into, pointing to the bin folder, I can run my program by typing the program's name, in this case, hello. Makes sense. How many people make sense? Raise your hand. How many people not quite so much? Raise your hand. Seriously, cool. You got to say, I don't know. I used to say, I don't know in my classes all the time. And then students be like, dude, I'm so glad you're saying you didn't know because I didn't know either. Why weren't you saying you didn't know in class <laughs> then? All right. So it'll, it'll hopefully click. You know, it just isn't a thing of exposure and working with the code and going through the presentations and doing the exercises. And uh, make sure you're doing the exercises. And, and tonight, while I'm thinking of it, one homework assignment for you all for this weekend. I'm going to bust your chops a little bit uh, <clears throat> for this weekend and the first week or two. Because, right, it's like everybody else is going easy in all your other classes. No? It is. So uh, you're going to watch day one and day two of Caleb videos this weekend, and hopefully that will help solidify everything. And oh shoot, I should put the links into those videos, and we can find those from the syllabus. All right, back to our, uh, resume our regular programming. So I could run this, right? There's my path variable pointing to documents go bin, which is my workspace. Uh, go is my 
workspace and inside my workspace I have bin package and source and my bin is where my executable is and so since I have that path set and since inside there I have an executable now called hello I can just type hello in at the terminal and uh, my hello executable will run. Uh, if I comment out that path then hello will no longer run. So just sort of demonstrating how path environment variables work. Um, so, uh, and this is just a little clarification, you know, in the very first video I called it Go Workspace, but then I called it Go, and uh, I don't want you to get confused that I have, you know, user local Go, you know, that, that was where my SDK is versus here is my documents Go, which is my workspace. So, that's my workspace. All right, so a little review of this, this one is, uh, you know, WebStorm has cool code completion, Adam? With Go Plus, yeah. With Go Plus, too. The latest update actually made it a whole lot better. Cool. And then we have package main, which is the entry point to our program. Right inside there, you could have func main. You could only have one func main inside package main, but you could have many more funks inside package main that just aren't called main. And pa packages are also known as libraries, right? Um, you know, uh, importing other people's code with the import statement. We looked at uh, functions, you know, and what makes a function accessible outside a package is capitalization. So uh, capitalization makes a function quote unquote public, and lowercase restricts the function just to the package. Uh, we looked at parameters versus arguments. So which one is, uh, which word do we use when we're declaring a function and when we say it's going to take blank parameters, parameters, right? And then uh, when we use a function, we say it takes arguments. And expressions happen horizontally or vertically? Horizontally and statements happen vertically. And uh, variable, constant, literal, and command click taking you to the source code and go run, go build, and go, uh, go install. So those are the, the things we learned here. And then there's a couple of questions for you to answer. And thank you for those who have already turned in your answers. All right, but that should help solidify things. And then if you get stuck, you could help each other out in the discussion board, which is now on Blackboard. And, um, you know, yeah, that'd be a good place. Like, what's the answer to this? And then you could, like, create a little video even and put it on YouTube and then just put in the link. So I don't know if any of you have that capability, but that's a good way to do it. All right, so how's the speed, the pace in this class? It's okay? Yep. Uh, too slow? Raise your hand. I'm serious. <laughs> so, like, we, we could just skip things and go, go a little bit quicker. All right, so I'm going to stop this video and then we'll start the fourth video.